um, it's pretty much the same, you know, no, no big changes. They still see me as, you know, Peter, but they know me as Zaid and I'm Muslim, you know. The way I figured things was that when you become a Muslim, life is, the trials start coming. It's not like, oh, become, when you become Muslim, things are going to become easy. They actually become more difficult. Because before you had no rules, you could do whatever you want. Now suddenly I have all these rules I have to follow. And I have no support. So it, it was very difficult at the beginning. But uh, what kept me there is holding to the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because for the first time in my life I wasn't alone. Well, I had quite a, a, a few friends who I had for the majority of my life. And at the point of, of telling them that I had reverted and become a Muslim, that those relationships ended. And to this day have never rekindled. And um, yeah, that was difficult because everything, my social circle that I knew along with everything that I knew for my entire life at a point in time ended. And at that point I hadn't established a replacement. I hadn't established a new circle, a new social circle, a new networking circle, a new sense of belonging um, necessarily. So there was a period there, what I often refer to as no man's land. And you really, because you can't go back, you don't want to go back. Um, and you're trying to go forward, but you're really not sure how to go forward. There's a lot of the um, people who are born Muslim that don't understand how a new Muslim has to adapt to this Islamic society. Um, and when I said before about nationalities, you know, being maybe the only Aussie at some mosque and everyone else has got their own groups or family, you feel um, alienated because of that. I've um, had a business at the time that I reverted, it was in the entertainment industry, and I've, I've been involved in that industry since I was 15. Very non-Islamic. One of the first things that I had to, to acknowledge and let go was that business. So the business was sold and, and disposed of very quickly. Um, so that was one of the most radical changes. I was really nervous about wearing hijab, actually. Yeah, I, I think because it's such a foreign concept when you're brought up in, I mean, in, in a different culture essentially, or in a, in a culture like Australia where the hijab is such a foreign concept to a woman's appearance. You know, it's quite the opposite. You know, the the, the saying, you know, is quite common if you've got it, flaunt it. And, and in, in Islam, that's the opposite is true. <laughs> if you've got it, hide it. <laughs>
So I think that when you first become Muslim, I think often if you can tap into things like a revert support group, you've got people who are going through very similar things to you who also might be isolated from their families or having family difficulties, which you can access direct support from and you can empathise with each other. Trusted resources, like, for example, probably just like a good group of friends I have, and they'll tell me someone they trust, and I'll just take information from there, maybe even from a mosque, you know, as long as you know the people and you understand what they're about. 25 years ago, reverts couldn't even find a Quran in English. But now you've got Qurans in you know almost every language you can access. I, I, I don't have, for example, the, the typical look and feel of what the average Australian out there would perceive to be a Muslim. You know, and I do still get to this day, eight, nearly nine years on, um, that reaction of what are you doing in this mosque, for example. I walk in and everyone's heads will spin around. And, yeah, occasionally I will, and perhaps I shouldn't say, relax, I'm Muslim, and I keep walking. You know, in a shopping centre, oh, you know, why don't you go back to your own country? I'm like, oh, where do I go? <laughs> There's a general assumption that all Muslims are refugees, or all Muslims came from somewhere else, not that it's a religious choice. Uh, and, you know, I was born here, uh, you know, from back in Smash, for God's sake, you know, the dinky die, mate. Um, so, you know, and I, I think I think that's, that's just, it's, it's a misconception to do with a... Uh, people from overseas as opposed to it being a valid religious choice. I think that the community has had to strategically set itself up according to ethnic lines in order to sustain itself, but I think that that will disappear as um, younger generations who do speak English move into senior positions where they no longer necessarily see the need to be um, dominated by a specific ethnic group. Reverts come with clarity. I'm not suggesting for a moment that life on Muslims don't come with clarity at all, it's not, not intended that way. But we don't come with the cultural, nationalistic um, attributes that many of their brothers and sisters do as well. So it, there, there is that additional clarity that I think is, that is valuable. We're a very small community and we have lots of different needs in the community. But unless we start working together, we won't achieve the results that we really need to see today. Basically all the different groups out there, you know, um, like they only stay to themselves. They don't help each other out maybe, you know, but yet this brother might be from a certain area and I'm from a certain area, but we, uh, it doesn't help each other out, you know? We don't help each other like we should, like Islam says. Regardless of your religious background, if you're going into a family environment where everyone is speaking a language other than English, and if you, I think that's, there's nothing more than an isolating experience like that. And Muslim reverts will feel that experience at Jummah prayer, when khutbahs are delivered in Arabic, and so you're sitting there twiddling your thumbs for half an hour, um, waiting for the English version, if you get it. Um, I guess other things that still confuse me to this day is, we have two Eid festivals here in Melbourne. You know, we have them a week apart at the same venue, you know, you sit there and you wonder why. You know, we're one community, we're a very diverse community, and perhaps therein lies the answer, but we are one community ultimately, and it'd be great to see that, that come together and that celebration as one, rather than as two, or three, or four. Um, Muslim Standard Time, <laughs> MST. Uh, yeah, this is a, a still an interesting experience. It's difficult to organise services sometimes when the Muslim community are rocking up an hour to two hours late, depending on the culture background.